Okay, number 29. The proportion of men and the proportion of women who worked over the summer. Now, they want to know the hypotheses. So, um, let's see, what are we going to do? Well, we can probably rule out the last two because the null hypothesis, the first one, H O, they should be equal to zero. We always assume that, remember, no change, no difference is the null hypothesis versus what we are trying to prove. Now, what are we trying to prove? Let's say I think we're trying to prove that men went, worked more, something like that. Yes, uh, men were more likely to work than women is what we're trying to prove. So if we subtract these two, if this one is bigger than this one, we would get a number bigger than zero. Bigger than zero. Here it is. If we subtract those two, we get a proportion that's bigger than zero. So that is B. So there you go. There's that one. Let's look at the next one. So this question talks about pooled data right here, the pooled sample. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the two fractions, the men and the women. So let me write that down. So we just combine the fraction of the women, which is right here, and the fraction of the men, 44 out of 550. We just add those two numbers. Here they are divide, and you get 0.85, which is choice D. Okay, so on this one, we are going to do a 95% confidence interval, and it is nice and tells us in the problem explicitly that it's men minus women. So I'm going to go to the calculator, press stat over to test, all the way down to letter B, which is the two-proportion z-interval. So for the men, it was 44, 484 out of 550, and I'm just putting it in this calculator here, and then the women was 410 out of 500. And it is a 95% confidence interval down to calculate, and it tells me this. So you might be thinking, that's not helpful. But if we think about it, um, we can probably cross off these two and just say, well, we got 0.06 and we're adding and subtracting some number to it to get our interval. Well, what do we add to 0.06 to get that number? Well, I would put it in the calculator, 0 0.10326 uh, and subtract 0 0.06 and say, oh, they added 0 0.04326, and that looks like it's going to be choice B. So let me write that down, what, what I just said. So like I said, I'm going to take this high number right here and say, well, what do we add to that to get to, what do we add to 0 0.06 to get to this number? We take this number and subtract 0 0.06, and that's what we added to it. So we add and subtract that number, and it is choice B. I just want to say that one more time. So let's go to the next one. Okay. So they're trying to figure out if the substance M can help restore memory. Now, they split the rats up 10 and 10. 10 get this substance and 10 don't. And they do it randomly. And it says that right in the problem there. So, but here's the problem. Only two out of the 10 were successful. And then even this one, it was 7 out of 10. Well, you have to have a minimum of 10 values of successes and 10 values of failures in each group. So, for instance, um, just to say, if we took 2 out of 10, right, those were our, if we take that proportion and multiply it by our sample size, 10, what are we going to get? We're going to get 2. That number has to be 10 or more. So the normal condition is violated. Remember, you have to have at least 10 successes and failures 
in each situation. Okay, so let's go, you know, I'm going to just um, post this and do the other ones in a separate video.